The Adventures of the Little Prince is approved and recommended by the National Education Association. Bonjour, mes amis. I am so very happy you have decided to come with us on another journey into far out space, to that tiny planet called B612. You know, of course, who lives all alone in this small world, eh? Oh, oui, the little prince. You might think it is sad living on such a small planet, but let me tell you something most fascinating. Because this world is so very small, it revolves many times in one day. Each day, the little prince sees 44 sunsets. C'est magnifique. Alert to base! I'm coming in from outer space! Hi there, little buddy. Hey, little prince! It's me, Swifty. Your Royal Highness? Oh, I see. I dropped in at kind of a bad time. Just not like you to be so downbeat, little old buddy. It's my rose girl. I try hard to please her, but she's so difficult. I do everything I can think of for her. I talk to her all day. I sit with her at night, but it's not enough. Got the answer. Time you took another little space trip. You're right, Swifty. She's always happy to see me when I come back. I'd like to go to a nice planet I've never been to before. There's a lot of them out there. I think most of the comets are heading south today. Swifty, we both know there's no such thing as north or south in outer space. And there's not even up or down or sideways. Gotta say you're right on, Your Highness. What you want to do is go straight out. Out and away from your rose girl. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, you know. Thanks, Swifty. I'll get my three volcanoes cleaned out real good, and I'll see that my rose girl has water and everything she needs. Besides, I'll only be gone for a day or two. You're extinct, but I keep you clean because you can never tell about volcanoes. I ought to get rid of these bail bobs. This will make sure the rose girl never gets thirsty. That does it. I've done everything I can think of to keep you happy and comfortable while I'm gone. Anyway, I'll be back so soon you probably won't even miss me. Now you come and visit the pretty rose girl every day and keep her company here. I'm not leaving you, you know. I just think it would be good if we didn't see each other for a couple of days. I wish I could take you with me on these trips, but it's impossible. Well, I'm going now. See you soon. A rose doesn't bloom forever, you know. I said I'd be right back. One of these times you'll find another planet you like much better than this, and we'll never see you again. Never! I have the butterflies, no longer ugly caterpillars. I'm sure none of us will miss you at all. So please hurry. I don't want you to miss your comet and bon voyage. Oh, I'll be right back. You'll see. Goodbye. With the help of Swifty, the little prince has soon caught a comet that is whisking him to outer space faster than the speed of light. Past red giants and white dwarves he blazes, over black holes, through meteor storms, and around spiral galaxies.
After traveling billions of light years, the comet finally lands on the alien planet of Regus in the constellation Taurus. It is a very nice new world, but not many people have yet discovered it. The little prince is most fortunate to have landed near the cabin of Balador, who has given him shelter. For Balador says he is the one who owns this whole planet. Morning, Prince. Huh? Prince? Why do you call me Prince? Because you own a whole planet like me, and I'm a prince. Well, now, I guess maybe you're right. Your planet is so much bigger than mine, it must be awfully hard to take care of all alone. No trouble at all. Matter of fact, I own all the planets and stars out there. All the galaxies and constellations in the universe. All except mine. And how can you own all the others? Because nobody ever thought of it before. That's how. I'm the first one to stake my claim on the universe. But I don't know what I'll do with it. I can't touch the stars or sniff them like these beautiful flowers. And you can't take care of them and love them like flowers. They need me. I'm no use to the stars. You're right, I spoke nonsense. The stars belong to everyone. The flowers are mine. That's good. And I'd like to help you care for them. I think they could use some water. <laughs> the flowers and I appreciate your help, young fellow, but you don't have to bring them water. The rains will come soon enough. When I was a young astronaut, I traveled throughout the universe seeking the perfect planet, and I found this one. But it had no flowers. Then I searched the entire galaxy looking for flowers that would grow here, and I finally found them. You brought flowers here just like the rose came to my planet. A world may be nice, but what is it without flowers? Ah, you know, eh? I think it's wonderful that you brought flowers to this new world, Balador. And I think it's wonderful that you have come to this planet, however that happened. Okay, let's get a reading. What is it, Balador? Lower two degrees. One step to the left. Give me a read. Ah, yes. Good, good, good. That's exactly where we want to start. We're going to shave the whole top off that mountain. Alien invaders, what are you planning to do to my mountain? Get out! Sir, we are surveyors. From where? Why, we're from planet Earth. Come to ruin us just like Earth. My dear sir, we are surveying this area for a magnificent resort and sports area that is going to be built here. You should be I'm pleased. I'm not pleased. This planet is unpopulated. Don't you realize what this will do for land values around here? When the people start swarming in, you could become a millionaire overnight. Millionaire? But he owns the whole planet. Nobody owns a whole planet. Earth has claimed this one. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Don't step on the flowers! <laughs> and to think, I turned down a nice assignment in California for this. You're already destroying things, and you haven't even started yet. Flowers? What's so special about them? I've seen more and better flowers than this in a window box in a little house in Pittsburgh. Let me have the charts. I want to show these aliens something. Come on, come on. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here it is. Now I'll show you. You'll see here where Earth long ago staked a claim to this planet and made tremendous plans to develop it. It's going to become the playground of the universe. They envision this spot as ideal for a ski lodge and they intend to put in a man-made lake with several marinas. Just over there will be the village with all modern conveniences and just above it will be a complex of beautiful condominiums. We'll build an all-weather highway, a railroad and an airport. Of course, you, as an original settler, will have a lifetime membership in the club and free use of a golf course. That sounds very exciting, but you've got all those wonderful things on Earth right now, haven't you? Why do you have to build them away out here? Space travel, that's the big thing now. Jet lag is old-fashioned. Today, people want to go through time warp. My beautiful flowers, they want to cover you with tar and play tennis on top of you. <laughs> 
Actually, we plan for the bowling alley there. But a tennis court's not a bad idea. Let's see. We could put the bowling alley up there where the cabin is. <laughs> what about deep sea fishing? <laughs> I knew we were forgetting something, and no yacht races or scuba diving. Maybe if we built a small ocean? Why build anything? Because it's my greatest assignment, and I never fail. Maybe you got the wrong planet. No way. You're just wasting my time. Don't step on the flowers! Maybe this is the wrong planet. Are you all right, Chief? Hold on, we're coming. Keep the aliens away. I'm a sensitive artist. I can't stand outside interference. Why did they have to pick your mountain? Hmm, people only want land somebody else owns. If there's nobody on it, they figure it's worthless. Then here's what we'll do. Ha, huh, we'll send them to the people on that mountain over there. There's only a handful of people on this whole planet besides me, and they're clear on the other side. Well, then maybe I can interest them in an entirely different planet. Huh? Give me a fix. A little more to the left. No, no, not so far. Easy, easy. Sir. Don't annoy me. Why do you have to build here? I can show you a lot of other planets just as nice. You expect me to leave this planet with you, a mere child, you'll pardon the sarcasm, to visit other worlds? I've investigated thousands of habitable planets in 15 major galaxies and four constellations. Believe me, I know what's out there. There's not another planet like this within a hundred light years. There must be one somewhere. Maybe, but we're rapidly running out of good new planets to develop. We've got to grab one like this when we find it before somebody else does. The old man can't stop us. The dynamiters, earth movers, and bulldozers are already on their way here. No, don't destroy his beautiful, peaceful new world, please. Don't be ridiculous. We'll make this a vacationer's paradise. Oh, the man thinks he can improve on Mother Nature. Our first step, burn that cabin. The flowers, do they have to go? <gasps> Couldn't you just leave them? Beautiful flowers. I worked so hard to raise them. I know. I worked hard to raise my rose girl, too. It's wrong to destroy somebody's labor of love. Those flowers have as much right here as a golf course. That man could build his vacation land someplace else. They don't need this place. I told you, lad, they only want what somebody else has started. They know it'll work here. Maybe we can convince them that it won't be that easy. Let's try it anyway. Come on. You really should listen to Balador, sir. There are things you don't know about this planet. I learned the hard way. I'm listening. When I first came here, this place was barren. No flowers, no grass. Not even a miserable weed growing anywhere. It was the same all over the planet. Just rocks and dirt. Nothing growing. That's exactly right. Tell them how hard you worked to finally bring the first flower here. I scoured the universe in my spaceship just to find one flower that would grow here. From planet to planet I trudged through forests and jungles, dove into dangerous waters, crossed frozen wastelands and scaled towering mountains. I rode western ranges and crossed trackless deserts. I almost gave up the search, but then one day, on the high mountain top of an alien planet, I found my flowers. I brought some back and planted them on a hilltop. I watched over them like a mother hen. I tended them carefully for days and weeks and months, and I dreamed of how it would look when the whole mountain was covered with bright, happy flowers, blooming right up to my cabin window, filling the air with their wonderful perfume. I waited and watched and dreamed. There were times when I thought they were never going to grow. Then Eureka! They started booming on the mountaintop. I began carefully digging them out, carrying them down and transplanting them all over the hills and meadows below. Now you see they're everywhere, as if they'd always been here. It took years to get one flower to grow. Well, who needs a lot of flowers? I thought most everybody did. You got an answer for that? 
Well, if you don't care about flowers and growing things, then that very high mountain is for you. Nothing will grow up there. Not even baobab trees. And you have to watch out for baobabs, you know. They'll give you a lot of trouble. Yes, they're bad. Grow like weeds and choke out everything. Then let's get up to that other mountain before they start. <laughs> <laughs> Teardrops are like raindrops As they fall, a flower's growing Who knows, it just might be a rose There are good seeds, bad seeds But you'll never know till you watch them growing Who knows, it just might be a rose Watch out, watch out for the day of seed gone bad Watch out, watch out for their roots run deep And they grow and grow and grow and grow and grow There are good days and bad days But you'll never know until you look them over Who knows It just might be the best day of your life Watch out Seed gone bad. Watch out, watch out for their roots run deep and they grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Watch out for the bay of bars. Watch out, watch out for the bay of bars. Watch out, watch out for the bay of bars. Watch out. Isn't this much nicer? No baobabs. Excellent view. And the air is crisp and clean. There's that natural light, too. You may have had a good notion. I just knew you'd like it better up here, sir. Hmm, some weather's stirring up. Could be a big blow coming down. Can't ever tell just what's brewing. Windy. Storms? Bad weather? Oh, I'm afraid that's something we simply couldn't tolerate in the ideal vacation land we're planning. Oh, that concerns me. I'm sure you don't have bad storms in your area. Mm -mm, but we'll get those baobabs. <laughs> we can chop down those baobabs, eradicate them. But there's not a thing we can do to prevent bad weather. Now wait. No, no, this is a mistake. I shouldn't have listened to you. Let's go back. Your area is perfect. I knew I was right all along. My instincts never fail me. I have the master's touch. You can't stop progress. You can sidetrack it. Ah! Oh, why did I ever come up to this awful place? You talked through your hat, you alien invader, and now you've lost it. Good. Batman really has a one-track mind. This won't be easy. All right, you want to go back, so go back. I'll even give you a shell. Push, push harder. Please, just help me get back to I'll your even area. Help you get Maybe all the we way can back to compromise. Earth. You've got to push harder. I'm not getting anywhere. Never will. <gasps> Look at the sky. A thunderstorm. And maybe a little rain. Maybe lightning. So, what's a little thunder and lightning? Get going. Please, I'm scared to death of lightning. Ah! No, he fainted from fright. There's a cave over there where we can take him, and he'll be out of the rain. There's one thing for sure, this won't ever be his favorite vacation land. The clouds are drifting away. I think our rainstorm is about to blow over. You had a good idea, young fella, but now I wonder if we could ever talk him to moving up here. He's gotta like this, unless he's scared to death of rainbows, too. It's beautiful. I just know he's going to like it. I hope he wakes up pretty soon and forgets all about the rainstorm. I'm sure he'd be pleased. It's a hurricane! Everybody into the shelters, quick! Funny, I'm in a shelter and it's sunny and bright outside. Glad you're awake, sir. Come out and join us. 
Was it all a bad dream? Is this my ideal vacation land? Come on up here and look down. Wait till you see the wonderful view from this point. This must be it. I don't quite remember what happened. Ah, yes, this is it. Perfect. <laughs> this is where we're building the lodge, isn't it? Yes, yes, beautiful ski slopes. And over there, the golf course and tennis courts. It's all much better than I remember it. And here's something else. Look at that, sir. A whole mountain covered with beautiful flowers for your vacationers to look at and enjoy. You don't have to plant them because it's already been done for you by Balador. A labor of love, I'm sure. They're absolutely delightful. That lightning really did hit you. You really like those flowers? You leave them there? I wouldn't touch them. Look, there's an even better view over this way. Another mountain, all covered with the same beautiful flowers. They all look so bright and happy and healthy. And there isn't a sign of one of those terrible baobabs anywhere. Not, Not a, a sign, sign of baobabs, of baobabs anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there ever were any baobabs. I knew that. So, who cares? Watch out for the baobabs. They agree on something. Watch out, watch out for their roots run deep. And they go and go and go and go and so the little prince helped an old man to save the land he loved and the flowers he had worked so hard to grow. It gave him great pleasure to think of how happy his rose girl would be to hear of this. Those flowers might even be her close relatives, Nispa. Of course, there are no baobabs on the planet of Regus. The little prince chuckled about this as he caught a comet back to his small world. Abiento.